Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, music lovers and audiophiles. In this video, I'll touch on some of the highlights from our recent visit to the Expona Audiophile Trade Show. I hope you enjoy it. Expona is the largest North American audiophile trade show. It's held in Chicago each spring, and it's open to press and to consumers. The Absolute Sound, of course, had a team of reviewers at the show, and I want to report on some of what they discovered. But first, I need to say that while you may want us to tell you what the best sound was, I simply don't think that's possible in any meaningful way. Not to mention the issue of whether there even is a best, show conditions are not ideal for fully assessing equipment. There are issues of noise, there are issues of seating positions, there are issues of room size, there are issues of whether we're even in the room at all because there are more demonstrations than we can fully visit. The result is that we end up listening for some evidence that the equipment on demo has a special quality rather than trying to figure out what is better than what. So that is to say, we can't evaluate overall excellence. If you want delusional BS, you'll have to go somewhere else. Sorry. Okay, let's move on to what we did notice as possibly deserving your attention. We, in this case, includes Adrian Alexander, Cynthia Blankenship, Robert Taylor, and me. Robert Harley, Andrew Quint, John Vallon, and Andre Jennings will have additional thoughts in an upcoming issue of the Absolute Sound magazine. All right. Let's start with the new Morel Avira 633 speakers. Driven by a Hegel H390 integrated amp, the $2,000 per pair Morels were nicely balanced and punchy. I thought the design was attractive and the size seemed easy to integrate into real rooms. 89 dB sensitivity is also nice if you wanted to start with something like a Blue Sound Power Node. Next up, we have a real treat, which was hearing Borison's new $16,000 C1 stand mount speakers driven by the one box access forte 3 streaming DAC amplifier the level of engineering in borison's drivers is impressive and goes beyond the special carbon fiber cones dynamic and balanced the c1 impressed everyone we talked to who heard the demo audio technica showed the Narokami limited edition headphones with the Narokami tube headphone amplifier in a private room to get around the ambient noise problems of a show. The headphones are priced at $4,200, but the amp, wait for it, is 104 k You can argue with the price point of the amp, but with the caveat of limited listening, the overall sound was engaging and the bass tonality and detail could make you think about which bank to rob. The headphones, fortunately for many of us, are available separately. The Linkwitz LX521 speakers were a source of many delights. Linkwitz did what Linkwitz does, which is to create a sound space unlike almost any other speaker. New listeners to the brand could hear and appreciate it right away. Linkwitz showed new finishes for the top panel, including a specially treated clear plexi type material. But for us, having spent a week or more with the LX521s, the big thing here were the AB demos of Plangent's Pro Audio technology for distortion reduction of analog tape remastering. And they also had an AB demo of the significance of mic techniques. As we've said, it helps to revise your model of how stereo works to focus first on the speakers delivering the mic data to your ears, so this demo was particularly revealing. Linkwood speakers also make more sense when you think about it this way. For a fuller explanation, see our review of the LX521. And we were so enthralled by this demonstration that we're working with Linkwitz to make these demos something you can try at home. We then enjoyed the T plus A Solitaire 540 line array speakers driven by T plus A M40HV monoblock amps and a T plus A source stack. Well controlled with solid bass, 
the 540's sound matched its impressive driver array. T plus A also showed a new 12K per pair Criterion S transmission line, yes, transmission line floor stander with controlled directivity for better in-room results. I have to say, after talking to them, these guys like science. Then we have the new, in fact, I think it'll be out later this summer, Diptyque 115 planar magnetic speaker driven by Audioflight Electronics. This $12,000 speaker takes the strengths of the 107 that we just reviewed a few weeks ago to a new level with a new physical structure and a new tweeter. The bass remains a nice balance, an impressive balance, I have to say, of weight and definition, while the mids and highs seem smooth but balanced. The size is also a win. It's about 40 inches or so tall for those who don't want a speaker to dominate the room. More intrigue comes from the Griffin Power Zone 3 AC system. I have to say, we're kind of huge fans, uh, fans of audio gear that does valuable things which we can't explain or didn't even know were things. So often, the audible precedes the explainable. The power zone is said to do some sort of electron flow modification, which had our skepticism meter maxed out. But experienced listeners to the Griffin AB demo all thought the results were easily audible and quite beneficial. We also like that the power zone can be configured with two 20 amp inputs for bigger systems, which is where it would seem to fit at $17,500. The Gershman Acoustics 30th anniversary Grand Avant Garde speakers sounded well balanced with standout bass control that was better than many other demos. Sporting relatively compact dimensions, these seemed like an interesting choice in medium sized rooms if the 18K per pair price suits your budget. Okay, there is much to say about the Joseph Audio Pearl Graphene Special Edition speakers which were introduced at the show. Unassuming, until the first track is played, we heard a wide variety of material with both Jay Shikora turntable and Berkeley Audio Reference DAC sources. Several things impressed. First, these Medium-sized speakers in a big room with Doshi KT-150 tube power were ear-catchingly dynamic. Audio shows could stop you from ever listening to Steely Dan again, but the Pearl Graphene's made us rethink that policy. Even more significant, many listeners noted that these speakers render a credible soundstage well off axis, and I'm including in that being outside of the left and right speakers, and they also deliver a meaningful sense of image height. MSB then showed the new Select Digital Director, which cleans up the signal going into the DAC. The demo featured a full MSB stack, including MSB power amps. There's just something extra relaxed, but also extra detailed about the MSB sound that many listeners found quite appealing. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to The Absolute Sound magazine, which we've been publishing for over 50 years. For $20 per year in print, or $10 per year in digital magazine format, you get 11 issues, each with around 100 pages of exclusive equipment reviews, music reviews, and buyer's guides. You also get early access to our three awards issues, Editor's Choice, Products of the Year, and Golden Ear. To subscribe, enter this URL in your browser or go to theabsolutesound.com and click on the subscribe button. Thanks, and now back to the show. The sound from the gorgeous Jay Shikora 15th Anniversary Standard Max Turntable with Idis Cartridge through the new Doshi Custom Phono Preamp was doing the things that make vinyl lovers vinyl lovers. The Doshi Preamp is partially special because the inputs, EQ curves, loading choices, meter types, and other variables can be customized to fit your needs. I don't mean by setting switches, although that's part of the deal, but if you wanted six XLR inputs, I think you can have it or you could have a different mix of XLR and RCAs. 
Anyway, many of these can, of course, be switch settings, as I said, but Doshi has, for example, done an EQ curve for wax cylinder transcription. You don't need that, but they use this to point out that a single box with all the possible options is probably impossible. So they do customization. Now, the customization is nice, but it might distract you from the sheer naturalness of the sound of this custom preamp. And did we mention that the design sings with a siren song? At least if you ask me. Vienna Acoustics is back with an interesting model called the Mozart Infinity. These look like slim, floor-standing speakers, but include a streamer, a DAC, and an amplification inside the speaker cabinets. They're high-res enabled via Rune or Tidal Connect, and the $14,995 price and the high-quality sound make for an easy-to-live-with package. Speaking of design, ButcherBlock Acoustics showed some very nice modular stands starting at around $1,000. Prices vary with size and finish, of course, and those finishes can include walnut, oak, and various combinations of woods. Now, as we reported the week before the show, Danville Signal showed the prototype Magnapan 1.7i open architecture speakers, that means minus passive crossover, with Danville's DSP Nexus crossover DAC preamp and one amplifier per driver. So that was six amps in total. And the DSP Nexus is used to set phase, crossover slopes, and do frequency tuning specifically to optimize the 1.7i. In listening, it was as if a screen or some filter between the Maggie's and the listener had been removed, which is really saying something because Maggie's are pretty transparent. In a medium-sized room, the lack of a sub was also not an obvious issue. Advanced Paris showed an attractive 190 watt per channel integrated amp with dual mono circuitry and a phono stage with both MC and MM inputs. The price is $37.99 and the sound was quite enjoyable using Audiophysic Classic 15 speakers. We heard several Estelon speaker demos but the Estelon X Diamond Mark II speakers did many, many things right in the Scott Walker audio room. Driven by a JMF preamp and JMF mono amplifiers, and using the new Ideon Audio Absolute Epsilon DAC and a synergistic Voodoo streamer, the sound blended imaging and dynamics while also being inviting. Accor Acoustics showed their new SRB Gem speakers with the MR Sub. The combined price is around 85k per pair, although the SRB Gem is available separately. So you can buy the SRB Gem and then add on the MR Sub later. Also included is a remote system for EQ and crossover management to allow better integration with your specific room conditions. And yes, the granite is backlit with switchable levels all the way down to zero. Now, at the outset, I said we wouldn't pick an overall best of show, but that isn't quite true. Jeff Fox of Notable Audio teamed with audio designers Nick Doshi and Jeff Joseph to put on our favorite demo of the show. Their first step was to put together a jazz trio using Polish drummer Adam Zerwinski with Chicagoans Nate Lapine on sax and Matt Ferguson on upright bass. They set up a stage at the end of the Jay Shakora Doshi Joseph Audio Room where we'd been listening over the weekend and had the band to play some very engaging music for an audience of about 25 lucky people. I didn't hear better sound all weekend. The level was thankfully modest, but the drum sound had unrivaled pop and the bass was rich and airy and the whole thing had lifelike imaging. Yeah, you're supposed to laugh now. But there's more to the story, which is why I'm talking about this. Doshi and Joseph had set up mics and had recorded the performance. Immediately after the band took their bows, the notable audio team rearranged the seating, and we listened to the recording on the Joseph Audio Pearl Graphene speakers, driven by Doshi Evolution Monoblocks. 
just like we'd been doing during show hours. With zero mixing or EQ, the sound of this live recording surprised me in its verisimilitude, both tonally and dynamically. The event was fun and interesting, and I thought quite educational. We hope Jeff does it again. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click on the subscribe button. Please hit the notification bell. Look in the description for links to the newsletter that we publish twice a week. It's free. And as always, we would love it if you would join us by becoming a subscriber to the Absolute Sound magazine. It's got hundreds of reviews and ratings of equipment and uh, the cost is $19.95 for a print version or $9.95 for the digital edition. We hope to see you again soon and thanks for watching.